Zimmerman, the 6'8 junior from Oostburg, Wisconsin. But Zimmerman is a guy who made 17 starts last year, so they bring in experience off the bench. Just a little bit of extra activity with the hip on Josh Owens. That's had pretty good, pretty good screening position already. Trying to improve upon that. Also in the game, the best freshman, Dwight Powell, is the top recruit. And you can see the way Stanford's playing. Virginia's going to have to knock down some consistent outside shots. Mike Scott drew a crowd of Powell and Trotter and Zimmerman around him on that right box when he caught the ball with his back to the basket. There is Johnny Dawkins, 20 wins in his first year, slipped to 14 wins last year. Stanford really missed the postseason for the first time since 1993. So many great seasons by Stanford under the tutelage of Mike Montgomery. Farrakhan has it blocked. Shot good, clock violation. Well, good clock recognition by both guys. Mustafa Farrakhan knew he had to get it off, but Jeremy Green as a defender also knew, and that's an advantage as a defensive player. You, know, you just want that guy to put it on the floor. Shot clock violation. If he elevates the shoot, you're right there prepared to go ahead and contest. On the drive, man is fouled. He'll go back to the free throw line, and the personal foul goes against Sen as Jared Mann will be back at the free throw line. He missed his first two shots, and there's a story behind his shooting. He fractured his right wrist so severely that two pins were placed in on each side. And last year, he struggled at finishing his shot. But the doctor said no surgery is needed. Talked to Jared before the ball game, and he said the doctors want him to wait until his basketball career is over before they take the pins out because they still it's still a dangerous situation. But he said the therapy he's gone through has really helped him in his flexibility. You know, a lot of this is mental for him right now. You know, he missed the big free throws against Kentucky last year when Stafford had a chance to pull off the upset and they lose in overtime and not to start this season off, this game off, missing your first four. Not a good sign for Jared Mann. And then, and then you couple that with the basket supports have changed completely here at Stanford this season. They're, they're suspended from the, from the uh, ceiling as opposed to basket supports behind the basket. That's a two-point shot that's made by Jontel Evans. A little bulldog. He just uh, hounds you defensively, and whatever he gives you in offense is almost a bonus from Jontel. In and out by Andrew Zimmerman. That's the big question this year for Stanford. Where will they get their points outside of Green? They're going to have to get them on transition. Plays like this. Zimmerman with the slam. Andrew Zimmerman from Oostburg, Wisconsin. Transfer from Santa Clara put a lot of time and energy and effort working on, on his game this summer. The coaching staff loved his commitment. And he's trying to elevate more on his jump shot, do a better job in transition, as you saw there, work on his defense. He, I think he's going to be a big key in terms of providing all-around play, not just scoring, but all-around play for Stanford. Mike Scott trying to back his way in on Dwight Powell. Good defense by Powell, and then a late whistle. We've got a timeout on the floor. Stanford, good defense, leading to an Andrew Zimmerman dunk, and Stanford trying to stay close with Virginia. To the success, and it always starts with defense. I mean, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever heard a, a guy who's scoring around 17 points a game last year talk about he worked on defense during the offseason. So I like that commitment to, to the important aspects of the game. Yeah, shooting is important, but got to be able to stop some people and that's one thing Johnny Dawkins demands of his players you got to get out there pull up the shorts slide your feet keep your guy in front of you Stanford must replace Landry Fields who averaged 22 points per game and accounted for nearly one third of the Cardinals points and rebounds Cardinal can tie the game with a three we're at Maples Pavilion we pick the picker action for Jeremy Green had that first look decided to pass on it but there. Good rebound by the freshman Powell, and he hooks it up and in. Dwight Powell out of Toronto, Ontario, by way of the IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida, shows why he was so highly coveted as a high school player. Terrific, terrific lift on that finish in the paint. He was rated the number seven power four by rivals. And talk about replacing some of Landry Fields' points. This is a young man, once he gets adjusted to the level of play, may be able to do some damage. Mustafa Farrakhan, the 6'4 senior from Harvey, Illinois, with the bucket. And there is a little bit of a shove by Joe Harris, guilty of his second personal foul. And you know, Jeremy Green kind of just 
basically a catch and shoot guy his first couple of years and he told me he really worked on trying to get his own shot some off the dribble skills and right there a nice little in and out move going to his left to create some space creating space in college basketball for shooters on any levels of basketball the most, the most important aspect of the game there's a steal by the Virginia Cavaliers they've got Will Sherrill in the game now along with KT Harrell and Harrell is the freshman that Rebecca talked about the 4A player of the year for the state of Alabama. Nice hustle on the part of Jack Trotter. Little dodgeball maneuver right there to avert the ball hitting him but then gets on the floor and, and, and makes himself a, a pest of Mustafa Farrakhan. Farrakhan at times this year might have to move over to play that point. This might be one of those times. Although John Tell Evans stays in the game and John Tell likely will see at least 30 minutes every single night. KT Harrell knocks it down. Got a good soft touch. Yeah, nice job, KT Harrell. Freshman out of Alabama. Zimmerman almost threw it away. Powell with the save. Gabriel Harris in the game and he had a spectacular game against USD the other night coming off the bench and making five of six shots and he was just a bit player last year. They get it inside to Jack Trotter. Big man Dwight Powell showing his versatility on the bounce pass inside to Trotter but a good no call by the official on the contact. And the NIT, they're experimenting with the restricted area that the NBA uses. But not so, not, not so in this game, but that was a good no call, I thought, by the refs not to blow the whistle on that contact, the, the, the incidental contact on the finish. Also in the game for Stanford, another young gun. That's Anthony Brown, the 6'6 freshman, wearing number three. Evans with the spin move, tries to kick it to the corner and throws it away. That's the fourth turnover by Virginia. John Till Evans, a little out of control. But here's the big guy on the move going left. Gonna step back, a little bounce pass off the hip inside the trotter. There's the incidental, incidental contact as uh, Cheryl tries to draw the offensive foul. But how about Virginia? They averaged only 10.7 turnovers a game last year. That was number one in the ACC and number 13 in all of college basketball. They've already made four, and Stanford trying to improve their defense. It's gonna be some adjustment. Uh, Sammy's a Zaglinski for Virginia is it was a point guard uh, who had some ACC experience the past couple of years. He's out until December. Zaglinski is with a knee injury, so these young guys have got to step up. We're seeing one just enter the game now, Billy Barron, who I really like. I think he has a tremendous future in the ACC. He's had a couple of great shooting games to start the season. Down low, they work the basketball to Josh Eustis, and he will miss his first shot. Josh Houston's got a great Falls, Montana. He's, a, he's another kid with, with tremendous potential along with Anthony Brown involved with the, on the double team with Andrew Zimmerman. Trouble. Stanford doing a great job defending that perimeter right now, and they forced a couple of turnovers. Yeah, both teams doing a pretty solid job on perimeter defense, and one of the things Tony Bennett talks about with his young kids is uh, not getting sped up, and at that time, KT Harrell got sped up, wound up committing the turnover. Zimmerman from the corner, in and out. Hughes goes for the win and loses the basketball, commits the foul. That's Stefan Nostic with the personal foul. We'll be right back. Cavaliers have the early lead. Teaching them how to manage their studies with basketball so they can be successful at UVA all across the board. Rebecca, if you go to Virginia or Stanford, you have to have that self-discipline to be able to get your academics done with your athletics. So no question. Yeah, the time management. He was a quarterback on the football team. There were eight and one games he started. Baseball pitcher, 1.63 ERA as a junior. And then also was the editor of the school newspaper. So he knew how to manage his time. He knew, he knew very well how to manage his time. Here comes Virginia with Billy Barron at the controls, and Barron floats one up beautifully from about 10 feet out. The coach's kid, Dad Jim Barron, is the head coach at Rhode Island, but he has had two terrific games to start this season off. 19-point game, a 14-point game, and there you see his aggressiveness offensively. He had, he had five of six three-pointers against William & Mary, and that's the best percentage by a Cavalier in four years. 
and he also can have this dribble drive penetration. Yeah, and a nice job. You know, and that was like a 15-foot runner, little floater by Billy Barron, and that's when you know a guy has a, a great scoring mindset, being able to knock down shots like that. He averaged 27 and a half points per game and six assists at Wooster Academy. Second foul on KT Harrell, so the freshman will go to the sideline, and at the free throw line is Josh Eustis, 6'7 freshman from Great Falls, Montana, C.M. Russell High School. And Johnny Dawkins took him because he really feels like this young man is going to be a late bloomer. Yeah, he came on strong late, led his team to a state title as a junior. Just watching him in practice, he's going to be a terrific basketball player. Zimmer loves that left hand, and he has had several good looks. That's about the fifth one. Somebody's got to take the lid off that basket. And he's got to just keep shooting because everything has been either in and out, kind of roll around the lip of the rim and not fall down for him. But, but it's, it's, it's been right on the money. Not exactly right on the money, close to the money. <laughs> close can, to the money. He can smell the money. <laughs> Stanford man to man defense again, just trying to keep Virginia out on the perimeter. Well, Cheryl, nice drive, left hand. Did he travel? Took one too many. Took a one two and then a little extra three there. A nice job on the up fake. Andrew Zimmerman has got to stay down and make Will Cheryl prove that he can knock down an outside shot with the hand in his face. Don't get over anxious. The most mistake free basketball team in the ACC last year has made six turnovers in the first half alone. And we're at the 10 22 mark. You talked about it, uh, ranked 13th nationally, just under 11 turnovers per game. But again, no Sammy Zaglinski, who was a big, big factor in running and controlling the tempo, handling the basketball. Tony Bennett had a lot of confidence in him. Can't wait to get him back out on the court in December when he returns from his knee injury. Bennett has a great staff with Richie McKay, Ron Sanchez, and Jason Williford. Now in the game, we get our first look at Aaron Bright. He's the 5'11 freshman top recruit out of Bellevue, Washington, who likely will be the starting point guard in the distant future. Um, yet another in and out lipper for Andrew Zimmerman. Well, Stanford beat USD, but they needed an 18 point run in the first half. 18 unanswered points to beat San Diego. Right now they're getting good looks, Marcus, but they can't finish. Well, Zimmerman, especially, and he's got buzzers look right now. Can't kill nothing, won't nothing die. But that time they call a <laughs> palming violation, one of the points of emphasis on Mustafa Farrakhan. If you gain an advantage, turning the ball over. And, and the other, the main point of emphasis I love with the officials this season, call the rules as written. The palming violation is in the books. Make sure you call it when, 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 when guys execute it. Aaron Bright, 4-3. 5'11 point guard out of Bellevue, Washington. Does a nice job coming off the screen, getting his feet set, knocking down the shot. And that major confidence booster knocked down your first jumper on the collegiate level. Stanford within three. This is Billy Byron missing the three. Good seal out by Zimmerman, and then he gets fouled. And the kill Mitchell just a little too aggressive going for the offensive rebound, grabs a lot of flesh. This is Steve Fiziak along with Marcus Johnson and Rebecca Harlow. We come to you from Maples Pavilion on the campus of Stanford University. Cardinal trailing the ACC Virginia Cavaliers 15-12. There's Tony Bennett in his second year. He was a great coach at Washington State. Won 69 games in three years, including two seasons where he won 26 games. He took his team to the NCAA tournament. Stanford 0 for 5 on the free throws tonight. 0 for 4 was their point guard, Jared Mann. And they are now 0 for 6. They're killing themselves. Keep chopping wood, carrying water. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta, you gotta keep grinding. It, it, Jared Mann missed four free throws. Zimmerman had tough luck on all of his shots. But you gotta keep grinding, grinding and keep being aggressive when you have the shots available to you. They will eventually fall. So Marcus, what do you do after enlightenment? <laughs> Chop wood and carry water. A couple of games ago, had a 21.17 rebound game, and who would have, who would have thunk it? As a, as a freshman, 6'4", 6'5", about 170 pounds, dripping wet, that he would develop into the type of player that he has become, and just, uh, just, just great watching 
his improvement and maturity as a person and player these past few years. And Landry will talk with our Rebecca Harlow in the second half. Great success story. Stanford now has their first lead of the game on the bucket by Jeremy Green, 1917. Little step back creates space action on the part of Jeremy Green. That was his own personal point of emphasis this offseason. Working on his off the dribble moves to free himself up the shot. Another turnover. Number nine. A team that averaged just under 11 last year. And right there, I can beat Tony. Bennett's mind, Sammy Zaglinski. Sammy Zaglinski. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I can't wait to see me some Sammy Zaglinski. From the corner, Jeremy Green. Uh -oh. He has tremendous range as far out as 25 feet. And again, that, that's off-season work, too, and, and skill work with the coaching staff. Nice job reading that screen by Jeremy Green to fade to the corner to find the open in there and take the hit. I thought he kind of gave up on the hit just a little bit early. Three-point play answered by John Tell Evans. You want your point guard to be tough, and John Tell is that. I think a lot of basketball players who play other sports, and John Tell was a tremendous high school running back. Well, he brings that mentality to the basketball court. Harrell will take a seat. Yeah, John Tell played at the same school as Allen Bubba Chuck Iverson, Bethel High School in Hampton, Virginia. Didn't have the, quite the success as a two-sport two star, but it was pretty darn close. Watch Jeremy Green work to get himself open right there defended by Harrell got to give him a little shake move fake going left and there's the fade corner find the opening where the defense isn't and bury the jump shot get his feet set and bury the jump shot that was the key the quick set of the feet on the part of Jeremy Green and that comes from extensive extensive cone work during the summertime in a sweltering hot gym he has a third of Stanford's points in the game thus far with 5 12 to play in the first half. Steve Fiziak with Marcus Johnson and Rebecca Harlow. Virginia coming to Stanford. They played last year and the Cardinal got the victory and Stanford's won six of the seven meetings in their history. Nice active post defense by Jack Trotter kind of playing a little cat and mouse game with Mike Scott. First on the right side move to the left side. Discouraging the uh, entry pass from the wings. Virginia once again hard press five seconds on the shot clock. Barron's got to put it up and they just have to fire it to the hoop and it's a shot clock violation. Great defense by Stanford and they've been led by a lot of young players on the floor who are understanding what Johnny Dawkins has been demanding. But here's Scott trying to set the screen but again just great rotation on the part of Stanford defenders and then Zimmerman's going to step out on Barron beautifully at the very end there to, to discourage him from getting the shot off and Media, you know what happens with the shot clock violation. Green's got 10. Jeremy heating up. One for seven. Last time out Monday night against San Diego, University of San Diego. You know, a lot of us said, you know, Jeremy Green scores two points and you beat a quality opponent like that. Who would have thought it? But tonight he's done a nice job at the bounce back game, shoot the basketball. Well, you and I saw him go off against California last year when he had 23 against the Pac-10 champions. From the corner, finally an answer, and it's from Mustafa Farrakhan. You know your personnel, know who you're defending. Jeremy Green, just a little too much help on the penetration. Left him a long way to close out on Farrakhan. They're giving he's Zimmerman done. that shot, and he's been staying aggressive. Well, he's got to. I mean, he's chopping wood and carrying water, like you said. Wood, carrying the water, putting a lot of work in the summertime. He's got a lot more lift on his shots, his jump hook, on his jump shot. Give him a cleaner look at the basket. Little pick and roll with Scott, and then he traveled. That is 11 turnovers for the Virginia Cavaliers. Tony Bennett can't believe this. Even his seniors are turning the ball over. Unforced errors. Beautiful Bay Area. Coming up towards Thanksgiving. Yum, yum. Six point lead, but Stanford roared back. 12 for 22 from the floor, 54%, 4 7, three point range. Yeah, doing a nice job. Just kind of the, the blue collar effort here. Defense forcing Virginia into a turnover. Zimmerman finished with the dunk here at some, some glass work. Second chance point on the part of the freshman, the white pal. And then beautiful job using the screens on each side of the floor. First base right to the left side of the floor. Fade to the corner, knock it down. So 
Johnny Dawkins talked uh, yesterday about uh, Stanford. Their offense is going to look about 50% different than last year. But when you can generate points through defense, through offensive rebounds, it's going to really help this basketball team that may struggle to score in stretches. Well, he has the ability to rip from outside. He broke Casey Jacobson's record for trays in a season last year. And now they're going to go deep to Zimmerman. And the kid still chopping the wood and knocking down those trees. There you go, chopping wood and carrying the wet jumper from the deep corner by Andrew Zimmerman. A lot of guys would have shut it down and lost their confidence by this time, missing his first four or five outside shots and jump hooks. John Tell Evans, he has been the man to keep Virginia in this game. But there's that football background you talked about. He just put his head down and, and made, made something happen, just blasted through the hole. Good defense by Farrakhan to force the Stanford turnover. Going to find that gap. You see Zimmerman knows basketball vision by the time he does turn and locates the ball. It's way too late on the inside, and you're guarding sin on the inside, not an offensive threat. So you got to be aware of that if you're Andrew Zimmerman. Cardinal by four. Inside of three minutes to play in the first half. ACC against the Pac-10. And the good staff has done a nice job, Jared Mann, on Billy Barron, just chasing him through screens, not giving him a, an easy look at the basket. A whistle and a foul away from the basketball. It will go against Dwight Powell. The young freshman picks up his second personal foul, and that will get Stephen Nastic back up for Stanford, the true freshman from Ontario, Canada, out of Thornhill Secondary School. Well, and that's where, again, you got to understand personnel. Sin had the basketball at the high post at the free throw line, and he was the excitable boy. He was about to travel, about to throw it away, about to do something not good for Virginia. So don't bail him out by being too aggressive on the interior against Mike Scott. Makes Sin have to make a play on the perimeter where he's very uncomfortable. Meantime, Virginia has to feel comfortable with the fact that they're only down to Stanford by two points, despite Mike Scott, who just made two foul shots, only one field goal and those two free throws. Four points for Scott, their leader. He's a guy who had 18 double doubles last year. Almost a steal, but getting it back is Harris, and he has it swatted away by Sen. They will call a foul on Sen. You talked about Mike Scott's tough time trying to generate some scoring opportunities. It's by design. Stafford is doing a tremendous job of just kind of ganging him, gang tackling him, and putting a lot of bodies around him when he's got the basketball, double teaming him at times when he's got it with his back to the basket, where he is so so astute at, at, at creating scoring opportunities for himself. So you got to give up something. They're going to give up outside shots, and so far Virginia doing a, doing, a, doing a solid job. Stanford now 0 for 7 as a team shooting free throws. Wow, that is a wow. Will Chamberlain had an 0 for 10 free throw night. They're saying just one, just one. Dave Harris knocks it down. Stanford one for eight from the free throw line. They push the lead to three, nearing the two minute mark of the first half. Last year, the Cavaliers went 15 and 16, started well, going 14 and 6, but by March had lost nine straight games. They don't want that to happen this year. They want greater consistency. Cheryl on the drive. Evans walked with it. 12 turnovers for Virginia. And again, is it by design? You talk about Stanford's defense on Mike Scott. And Jared Mann doing a tremendous job on Billy Barron running and chasing him around screen after screen after screen. We'll have our final score update coming up at the half and first half highlights and stats. Gnostic looking for an opening. Now he'll drive. Strong to the hoop but can't finish. That's a nice hard take going right. Look at those long strides going too. Farrakhan the lefty. Virginia shooting 65 percent from the floor but they've turned the ball over 12 times and that's why they trail by three. Here's Aaron Bright the talented point guard from the state of Washington giving it up to Zimmerman and Andrew has to fire it back and turns it over. That'll be an over and back violation. 
That's seven turnovers for Stanford. So neither team really playing a clean first half. 19 total turnovers. I think John Tell Evans has played every single minute of this first half. Virginia next will go to the Maui Classic and face Washington. The team that's picked to win the Pac-10 this year and a terrific player Isaiah Thomas. Here's Jared Mann on the drive up. Pretty kiss off the glass. A high degree of difficulty sat for Jared Mann. Jared Mann and talk about Washington. Isaiah Thomas playing well. Matthew Brian Almanick also but I think a big key with him is going to be Justin Holiday. His improved offensive game to try and take up some of the scoring void left by senior Quincy Pondexter from last year. You know, Lorenzo Romar, the quotes I've read that he said about Justin Holiday, so impressive. Barron, corner, Cheryl with the jumper. He can do that. Three. Yeah, he can do that. I mean, that's what Will Cheryl does extremely well. A little pick and pop action, dead corner. A nice job of Billy Barron on the curl to set him up. Evans with a steal and a foul called against the freshman Aaron Bright. I'm talking with the Stanford coaching staff. That's one thing Aaron Bright you know, that time he just got, got stripped. John Till Evans does a nice job and then using his strength, Evans right there. Now it's just who wants the ball more, who's going to out physical the other guy for the basketball. And that's where Aaron Bright has got to spend a little more time in the weight room and get him get himself stronger with his upper body. And this could be the difference in the ball game. I know we're talking closing moments, but Bright setting up a play for Stanford, the final shot in the first half. Instead, Evans, who's had a marvelous first half leading this team, drops in the first foul shot. And John Tell Evans, who only averaged two and a half points per game last year, already has 10. Fans, weekdays on FSN, it's the Dan Patrick Show. Don't miss exclusive guests, including high profile athletes and celebrities, breaking sports news and unparalleled insider access and pop culture commentary. The Dan Patrick Show, weekdays at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on FSN. I was listening to Dan the other day, he was talking about the Washington Redskins and Donovan McNabb. Very funny stuff. Yeah, he is. Here's the Cavaliers. They have just 6.9 seconds remaining. Evans will be back at the free throw line for one more shot, and then Stanford will have a chance to take the final shot, but they thought they would do that when Bright was picked clean by Evans. And you, you'd like, ideally, if you're Stanford, to have the basketball in the hands of Jeremy Green at some point, but there may not be enough time in terms of having to advance the ball up the court. Evans makes them both. He's got 11 in the first half. Here comes Aaron Bright quickly up the floor looking for dribble penetration. Instead, he'll take the three and knock it down. How about the kids? Who customer from Bellevue, Washington, Aaron Bright? Who needs Jeremy Green? You got me on the floor. A little crossover left to right. Love the clock awareness. In the level. Uh, he's been great. You know, with him, it was all about my demeanor for, uh, you know, approaching the NBA lifestyle and how it's more businessy than it is now. So, you know, it's not just him. Actually, it's a lot of the coaches. So they've been great with it. And not very many rookies in the league are doing what you're doing for the Knicks. What does it mean to not only be contributing, but to be starting? Uh, it means a lot. You know, it's very exciting. You know, it just me. It's just, you know, how blessed I am to be in New York in that system. So I'm really happy. Congratulations. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Rebecca, who's with Landry Fields, who last year in the Cancun Challenge when Stanford faced Virginia, that was his breakout game in his senior year. He, he had 25 of his team's 57 points in a five-point Stanford victory. 25 points, 13 rebounds. Right now, Mike Scott going to work, and Virginia cuts it to two. Here's Jeremy Green back to work, missing the three. Now it's Virginia with a chance to tie. And if you're Johnny Dawkins, that's a miss you can live with. Joe Harris with his first miss from three-point range. He had been four for four prior to that shot. Scott backing his way in on Zimmerman and loses it. That's another turnover. That's 15 turnover, but my goodness, it's like, look at these guys. Green, Thomas, Thompson, Vucevic, and Williams back. Back 10. Still full of outstanding basketball players Derek Williams I saw the one handed dunk he had off the lob a couple of games ago I expect big things from Vucevic Clay Thompson really worked to improve uh, 
other dimensions of his game and uh, the little guy, Isaiah Thomas, scored more points in his first two years than anybody in Husky history. You know what I like most about Isaiah? NCAA tournament, he really yeah. stepped up. Yep. And Washington, the pick to win the Pac-10 this year. Arizona, number two, and UCLA, third. And Abdul Gadi, the, the freshman last year, now a sophomore. He was just a 17-year-old freshman up until January, turn 18. But just watching him play, he has improved by leaps and bounds. Got his body tighter and more together. Officials just checking on the clock. Green, meantime, will take a seat for the Stanford Cardinal. We're looking for their second straight win. Their next game will be November 21st against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Big game for the non conference. Stanford is at Butler, who went to the Final Four and lost to Duke in the national championship game. That's a December 18th game for the Cardinal at Butler. And with Jeremy Green, how is the offense going to flow? They're going to double team Josh Owens on the inside. And Steal by Farrakhan. And he loses it, and no foul called. I thought Brown got him from behind. Anthony Brown, great job not giving up on the play. The freshman out of Huntington Beach, California. These are three ACC officials refereeing this basketball game, and they've done a marvelous job. Man at the point, and Green's not getting much of a rest, maybe 30 seconds, and he's gone to the scores table. From outside, that's Anthony. Should we call him Downtown Brown? <laughs> we used to have one here. <laughs> call him Wet. Whatever you want to call him, he, he has great form, great rotation, long, lanky, 6'6 six, six freshman. Johnny Dawkins told us he was their best three shooter of the recruiting class, and they brought in eight freshmen. Here's KT Harrell. No. Owens, nice rebound. Outlet, Aaron Bright. There he is again. Finding the right man, the hot man, Anthony Brown. Wet jumper from the right side. Good job, Aaron Bright pushes it up the floor. That's a that's great point guard recognition. Know who your hot player is. He's full of confidence, knocked down that first long jump shot. Keep going to him. Looks like Virginia did with Joe Harris. Oh, and a slip by John Till Evans, although he gets the ball back. I thought they might call that travel, but he didn't have the ball in his hands when he slipped. Here's John Tell. No. That was a force. Bright gets it again. Yeah, There's it. Anthony Brown. Right there. There he is. You, you asked. He misses <laughs> oh. off the front of the iron. Come on, freshman. Oh, this place would have gone Come crazy. on, freshman. We had you queued up, baby. <laughs> Your moment in the sun. You gotta be ready for those exams. <laughs> but I like the way these freshmen, Bright, Brown, Powell have responded here in this game against Virginia. Fans live from the Virgin Islands. The house will be rocking. Eight teams compete at one unbelievable location. The Paradise Jam Tournament live from the Virgin Islands Monday. The action tips off at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. And that's the Stanford Band. This is one of the most amazing musical festivals you will see. And that's all you can call them because they are all over the place, whether it's football season, basketball season. They have attended many <laughs> throughout their tenure. The LSJMB, the Leland Stanford Junior Marching Band. They have been renowned for their antics for years and years. You know, in their first game, Stanford against San Diego, a pretty good team from the WCC. Stanford won the game, but they hit, made only three of their 16 three-point shots. Stanford's taken the same amount tonight and they've made nine of them nine for 16 uh, and the freshmen have carried a big part of that load between bright and brown then a tremendous job knocking down the open trays when they presented themselves the senior Cheryl the former walk on brains outside he now has six points right now at point for Stanford And watching Aaron move away from the basketball also help on defense. I like him. Yeah, he's got a nice future. Yeah, real, real smart basketball player. And Stanford getting good shots, and Zimmerman getting an offensive rebound. But it's been a trepute barrage on the part of the Stanford shooters. Here's Jeremy Green off the catch and shoot from Josh Owens. Here's the freshman right before halftime. 
Knocking that one down and then Anthony Brown, the freshman. Nothing but wetness from the right, right wing. You better check up, you better guard somebody. Course, but talking to Dwight Powell, he says, hey, it's not about age. We're not freshmen, we're here to win basketball games. Certainly a lot of young guys stepping up. They're playing like upperclassmen early, particularly on the defensive end. Josh Eustis, a freshman grabbing an offensive rebound, misses the shot, but the Cardinals still up by five with a lot of freshmen on the floor. And, and that's one thing, I mean, Houston's will learn. You know, that was a that was, that was a manly man college rebound and then a high school finish on the inside. You got to keep that thing consistent. But a terrific job on the inside, just out battling for the offensive rebound. Will Sherrill looking for an opening. And Billy Barron, he's the guy that shot him back into the game in their first couple of ball games when they struggled in the second half offensively. Former Alabama player of the year, KT Harrell, having a rough time. He's missed his three-point shot twice in this ball game, and we have a whistle. There must be some sweat on the floor, and the officials will clean that up. A chance for Johnny Dawkins to talk with his team as they rally. Jeremy Green went him down the floor, and right there. Gets the feet tangled up, a little wet spot created. Aaron Bright comes out. No, no, he'll, he'll just go over to talk to Johnny Dawkins. So Bright's still back in the floor, running the point with Zimmerman, Green, Trotter, and Eustis. Yeah, Bright, interesting career path. Just, you know, one of these eighth graders who was just heads and shoulders better than everybody else. Came back down to earth as a, as a freshman and sophomore, but then reemerged his last couple of years. In high school, he's one of the top players in the state of Washington. Stanford has really hurt the Cavaliers in the offensive glass. Here's Trotter outside, missing the three. Zimmerman with a nice rebound and a seal out. But part of the problem, as you see, Bright train wow. another three pointer, and Aaron Bright is now four for four from three point range. We're talking to his AAU coach, Jim Marsh, friends of hoop coach out of Seattle, Washington. He talked about his leadership qualities. But he brings more to the table than that. This young man can flat out shoot the basketball. Stanford killing Virginia on second chance points. Part of the reason is four fouls with Hassan Sen, their seven foot center. Another turnover. Bright dives for it. It is a hell ball situation. And they say it's Stanford basketball. That's another turnover. That's 16 turnovers. By Virginia, so Stanford might be saying, "Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus." A timeout called. A great hustle play on the part of Aaron Bright, out hustling his AAU, his AAU teammate Joe Harris out of Shaman, Washington. Both guys played for Jim Mark, friends of Hoop, and the Bright gets the basketball, gets the timeout, and just a nice job maintaining possession. We come to you from Maples Pavilion on the campus of Stanford University. ACC Virginia Cavaliers against the Stanford Cardinal out of the Pac-10. Steve Fiziak with Marcus Johnson and Rebecca Harlow. The story has been the top Cavalier turnovers. They've committed 16, which has led to so many gift baskets by the Stanford Cardinal. Seven-point lead. Eight points, 56 to 48. And, you know, and, and today in college basketball, that is, this much time left, obviously that's nothing. Stanford has got to continue to take their time, get some good shots in terms of execution offensively, and then really buckle down on the outside shooters on the floor from Virginia, in particular, Joe Harris and Billy Barron, two very good-looking freshmen. Send back on the floor, playing with four fouls. He comes back in with 9.47, but they needed help on the glass. Bright gives it up to Zimmerman. Sen had to come out and defend him, but he got there late. This is the largest lead of the game for the Cardinal. Beautiful execution, double high screen for the two big guys. And one's a roller, one's a popper, and the shooter is the popper, and Andrew Zimmerman. Evans down low to Sen, who loses it. Game back by Virginia. Harris struggling to get it out to Billy Barron, who misses the three. He's been huge this year from three-point range, but not in this game. Houston goes down hard and uh, kind of banged his right knee, but he looks like he's fine as Harris commits the personal, his third. You know, I like this young man, Josh Houston. 
Great falls. Montana hadn't done a whole lot in this game, but you could see he just has a lot of basketball ability and really love the hustle on the part of, of Joe Harris, the freshman from Virginia. They'll lose a lot with Landry Fields, but the one thing we noticed, an upgrade in athleticism on the board. And here's Jeremy Green lighting it up from outside. He's got 16. Andrew Zimmerman pumping up his teammate as they're running back down the floor. Keep using me, baby. I'll keep freeing you up. Barron couldn't catch and shoot. Good chase defense by Jeremy Green, who had to fight through picks to get to him. Sin working awful hard to get post up position, but not a lot of confidence on the part of his teammates to feed him the basketball. Down low, finally finding home Will Sherrill. So Stanford's run is now 15 to 5, and this run all on three pointers, five three pointers for the Cardinal. Evans coming out defensively on Aaron Bright. Josh Owens at single coverage, he takes it up. And this is the shot. Got a great lift, though. Yeah, he did. Not, not a good, nice looking runner. What a hard screen on the part of Will Sherrill. Welcome to college basketball, Mr. Aaron Bright. But he forces the Cavalier turnover. Yep. Foul against Sherrill, his second. That's an aggressive screen. Not sure if they got him for moving or just for the brutality of the screen itself. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a, that's looks like just a good hard screen. May have moved his body slightly into Aaron Bright, but I thought just the, the, the nature of the impact caused the foul to be called more than anything else. That's a nice move. That's a nice move. I mean, this is a six-nine freshman played at IMG Academy down in Bradenton, out of Toronto, Ontario. One of two. High schoolers to be selected to work out with the Canadian national team, coached by Leo Routens, former Syracuse star, Tristan Thompson, the other high schooler from, from Texas. Joe Harris off on the left side, trying to protect that basketball. The ball is those guys really. There's Dick. Yep. What a great coach. Bay Area legend. Longtime assistant for Carol Williams at Santa Clara. Actually started out at that. California Berkeley recruited me back in 1972. That's how far back myself and Coach Davey go back. He lost out to uh, to a legend by the name of John Wooden. Cal didn't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. Well, fans, Sunday at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, it's the Ford Fox NFL pregame show brought to you by the all new Ford 150 built Ford Tough. Followed by Fox NFL Sunday with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers taking on the Vikings in what could be Brett Favre's final game versus his old team. Or the NFC West leading Seahawks battle Drew Brees and the Saints. Guess who's in the house? Uh -oh. Mark Madsen. He came to the basketball game with two of his old friends. We saw Chris Hernandez, a former point guard, with him earlier. Justin Davis also in the house. The Mad Dog. He was an All-American, one of the great offensive rebounders in Stanford history. And Stanford under Mike Montgomery always had terrific offensive rebounding teams. Yep, uh, I remember seeing him play the per first time he played for an AAU team from right here in Palo Alto where he's from. Steal by Jontel Evans. Nice, nice block by Zimmerman. Watching tape to LeBron James on that one. Chase him down, get it out of here. Yes, Anthony Brown. That's 10 for the freshman. They've got 22 by two freshmen. Aaron Bright with 12, and Anthony Brown off the bench with 10. All of them just sweet, long-range jump shots. Freshman Joe Harris for the Cavaliers off the right side. He's been off the mark the last couple of times. Maybe experiencing some fatigue. There's Brown again. Out the basket, Marcus. Are you kidding me? Huntington Beach. Anthony Brown, State Player of the Year as a junior and a senior. But right here, give credit to Andrew Zimmerman. Big Zim going to run it down from Oostburg, Wisconsin. Get that out of here. And then at the other hand, at the other hand, Anthony Brown right there. Nice job. Just kind of off the dribble, off the spot up. Quick, quick ups. Knocks it down. Knocks down his free throw after taking it hard to the basket. It's a whole different look up here on the farm this season, Steve. 
That's a career high for Anthony Brown in his first game. His debut scored only three points on one of seven shooting against San Diego. Confidence back. Mitchell goes corner. Farrakhan, the left-hander, puts it up and in. That thing missed so badly that it, fell, it actually missed off the back rim and just kind of died. Kind of died and found its way into the basket, but that's what uh, going to have to happen for Virginia to have a chance to get back into this game. Stanford has played well. Powell loops the pass into the corner. Uh oh. Dwight. Uh oh. Yes. Uh oh. He's swooping. He's swooping, Steve. He swooped on the pass from out of bounds. And then right there from the right wing did a nice job attacking and swooped from right to left to create some space to get that finger roll off. Connie Hawkins, huh? He's swooping. <laughs> Dr. J. Connie Hawkins. 6'9 and long and athletic. He's swooping. Let's get into some swooping on the Thursday night right here. Nice job, jab, baseline. I'm going to swoop up and around. Don't even think about blocking it. I'm too long. I've got too much, too much swoopability. 